So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at VZ lenses, Vazen 40mm T2.0 anamorphic lens for micro four thirds cameras. If you're following me on Instagram, you know that I got this lens last week and I have been using it for a little bit with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Let's go ahead and take it out, out of this case. Now this case does come with a lens, which is really freaking nice um, because you are gonna need that case. Cause look how humongous this freaking lens is. This thing is freaking heavy. I love the way this lens feels. Let's talk about what this lens is. Now this lens right here is a special type of lens. It is a 1.8 anamorphic lens for micro four thirds cameras. So you're looking at GH5, GH5S, you're looking at the BN PCC 4K, you're looking at Zcam Micro Four Third cameras. That's what this lens is made for. So as you all know, if you've been following me in my journey with this whole camera reviewing and travel videos, you know that I have been using DIY anamorphic lens. And this lens right here is actually my very first real anamorphic lens. And, and you probably already know or guessed it, I was very excited when I got this lens. I've never actually used an anamorphic lens before. I know there's already a lot of videos about this lens out there, so what I'm gonna do is just give you my pros and cons regarding this lens. Let's start with the pros. The Vazen 40mm T 2.0 lens will give you a 1.8 stretch. Now typically an anamorphic lens a good anamorphic lens usually have will have a two times stretch. So that means the oval bokeh are really, or bokeh are really, really nice and ovally. And usually if you use a two times stretch on a four, three sensor, that's gonna give you the perfect 2.39 aspect ratio that everybody wants. It's that cinema aspect ratio. So 1.8 is really not that far away from 2.0. So that's really one of the pros about this lens. The next thing that I like about this camera are the, the actual focus markings. Uh, if you have this lens mounted like this, the focus markings are both on the left side and on the right side. So it's really nice that you have both sides of the lens that show you your focus distance. All right, so the next pro that I like about this lens is the price point. Now this lens right here retails for around $3,250. Uh, US dollars that is and I gotta say you're probably thinking to yourself that's a lot of money but at the same time you have to consider the fact that a real anamorphic lens is close to $50,000 an airy anamorphic lens is around $49,000 that is pretty much a freaking Corvette in my opinion so comparing that to a $3,250 lens, anamorphic lens, guys, that's just a no-brainer. I know some people are probably gonna say, oh, the Surui, uh anamorphic lens right now is only $650. Yes, that's correct. But at the same time, if you look, that lens only has a 1.33 stretch on that lens. So if you look at the bokeh on that one, and it's it pretty much looks circular, in my opinion. So at that point, at 1.3 stretch, Having an anamorphic lens at that stretch factor is not even worth it. And that's obviously just my opinion. You, you can have your own opinion as well. Um, the next anamorphic lens that can probably touch this as far as the price point go is the Atlas Orion, which is $8,000. The next thing that I like about this, um, even though this company is fairly new, I've actually never heard of VZ lens before. Uh, the guy that I was emailing, Steve, he was really, actually really fast at replying regarding my questions about this lens, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit here. Uh, so the next thing that I like about this anamorphic lens is the focus breathing. If you don't know what focus breathing is, I'm gonna go ahead and show you, but basically uh, if you go from a minimum distance focus to a maximum distance focus, if the image is stretching out or in that's how much focus breathing that specific lens has. Now, as you can see in my examples here, uh, you can see some focus breathing on this anamorphic lens, 
but at the same time, most anamorphic lenses, if you ever watch a Netflix show that shot was shot in anamorphic, you'll know that there is some focus breathing in those lenses anyway. So let's go ahead and move into the cons of this anamorphic lens. Now, when I was looking this lens up a couple months ago, I was actually really, really impressed with the sample footage that they showed in the VC website. Um, so, uh, one of the things that I was kind of disappointed with, with this specific lens, and I don't know, I can't speak for all the other lenses out there. This specific lens is actually softer than what I saw in their examples online. Granted, in my footage, the one I uploaded a couple of days, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a clip here as well, you'll see that the footage is really soft with the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, even at the highest quality setting that I was recording in. And I know some people on YouTube actually noticed it as well, like, why is the image so soft? Why were you shooting uh, wide open? So this lens opens up up to f2.0. And when I was shooting this footage outdoors, I was actually shooting from 4.0 to like eight and it was still kind of soft. Granted, most anamorphics, even expensive ones, are soft. If you watch the new Star Wars, Skywalker, the Rise of the Skywalker, they use anamorphic lenses on that, I'm pretty darn sure, and some of those shots were really soft. Even when watching an IMAX, you can tell that it was an anamorphic because some shots were soft. Um, the next thing that I don't like about this lens is the freaking aperture ring, and I know a lot of professionals prefer this, but it's clickless. But this right here is so dang smooth that you really have to watch your hand because if you're hand holding it or you know pulling focus using your hand or without using any uh, follow focus, you can accidentally bump this aperture because it's so smooth. It's so freaking buttery smooth, it's ridiculous. So for me, that's kind of a con because I was kind of like, see if I just kind of like do that like that, it's moving. The next thing that I don't like about this specific lens is that the front of it doesn't have a standard uh, filter thread on it. So if you see the lens cap, it's literally just a, you just put it on because it doesn't have a thread. Uh, but VZ Lens is selling a adapter for it. Pretty much what you'll do, this is a 95 mil adapter. So what you'll do is you will put it here just like that and then you can screw in a 95 mil ND filter, which I ended up doing, which is not too bad, but if you are gonna do it that way, I would say just leave it on there. I'm pretty sure if you keep putting it on and taking it out, you're gonna do some wear and tear, so if you are gonna use this adapter, go ahead and just leave it on there and put you up and get you a lens cap. But yeah, that's that's pretty much another con. I wish it was standardized, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's considered a cine lens. You don't really see a lot of cine lenses like that with a uh, threaded filter. You usually use these kind of lenses on a matte box using a four x four ND filters. Another con about this lens, and like I said, it's probably just specific to this lens, is it has this little clunk to it. Listen, you hear that? I don't know if that's causing the image to be soft or anything like that, but there is a little bit of play. If you have this lens, can you go ahead and do the same exact thing I'm doing to see if you have that sound as well, like something is loose in there? Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're having that same issue. Um, the next con that we are gonna be talking about is the bokeh of this lens. It is oval, but for some reason, and I talked to VZ Lens Steve about it. I talked to him about the sharpness and I talked to him about the bokeh and he said, uh, that's pretty normal how it looks now if you're looking at my sample footage here You're gonna see that the majority of the bokeh are Slanted a little bit now this caught my eye because when using DIY anamorphic lenses my eye is trained to look at that because I can actually adjust how the bokeh looks on the DIY anamorphic lens so I can adjust the bokeh so that it's straight vertical like top down, vertical, straight as it can be. But with the anamorphic lens like this, you can't adjust that yourself unless you open this up. So I saw that automatically and it bothered the crap out of me. I mean, apparently that's how it's supposed to work and that's how it's supposed to look. 
And you know, I'm gonna accept that. That's that's no big deal. If that's how it's supposed to look, that's fine with me. But um, I don't know, the, the, the crooked bokeh and the softness of the lens just really killed it for me with this lens. Verdict. Uh, sorry, this is taking forever, but this lens is such an amazing lens if, if it worked out completely for me. So who is this anamorphic lens for? If you are tired of your DIY anamorphic having to focus both taking lens and anamorphic projector lens and you, and you want a single focus anamorphic lens that's not gonna break your bank or you don't have to sell your kidneys for, take a look at the Vazen. If you don't mind the softness of this lens and the slight crookedness of this lens and you have a Micro Four Thirds camera and you wanna get into anamorphics, absolutely take a look at this lens. Oh, one more thing before I go. If you are gonna use this with a Ronin S, it's not gonna work because it's freaking heavy. I think it's five pounds just by itself. So it's gonna be really front heavy. For you to be able to stabilize this or use a gimbal with this lens, you're probably gonna have to look at the Ronin 2, um, maybe the Movi Pro or something bigger like that because guys, it's, I mean, the, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and this thing put together is only six pounds, but the weight distribution of the setup is just too front heavy for the Ronin S to handle. So they are gonna come out with a 28 millimeter of the Vazen, and they're also gonna come out with a 60 millimeter of the Vazen lens. There's gonna be three lens right now, and this being the first one. Uh, I think the 40 mil, in my opinion, is the perfect uh, focal length, uh, pretty much. You can get a 40 and just shoot a whole movie with it without getting any wider than that. Uh, like always, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know, and I will see you guys later.